Hi there! This demo will cover how you can supercharge your workflow using formulas. Using formulas can help you save time and help surface new insights at a glance. In this demo, I'm going to show you how to work with text to avoid repetitive data entry, to create conditional relationships, to update fields based on certain conditions, and to work with dates to calculate the number of days since a certain event or say the amount of time that a task took. So if you're familiar with using formulas in a spreadsheet tool like Excel, there is a major difference when it comes to using formulas in Airtable. So let's go over that first. In a spreadsheet, you can create formulas that perform functions on individual cells. So for example, if I'm using this spreadsheet uh, to calculate, say, the percentage of completion for a proposal that I'm giving Noki, then I will want to divide my number of completed steps by my total number of steps. And since I'm looking for a percentage, I will multiply the whole thing by 100. In a spreadsheet to apply the same formula to other cells, I can either copy and paste, or I can use the fill handle. In Airtable, it's a little bit different. So let me show you why. Here, formulas perform functions on specific fields in a record. Fields are like columns in spreadsheets, so this is the total number of steps field and this is the number of completed steps field, whereas records are like rows in a spreadsheet, so this entire first row is the Noki media buying record. So let's set up a formula in Airtable and I'll show you the major difference. So we select the field type as a formula. And again, we want to divide this number of completed steps field by the total number of steps field and multiply the whole thing by 100. In Airtable, we can also select the format for the output. So in this case, we want it to be a percent. As you can see already, a formula field will apply the function to all of the records in a field. And unlike a spreadsheet, you can't select two cells that are not in the same record. So for example, this cell and this cell and perform a function on them. They have to be from the exact same record. So for the purpose of this demo, we're going to pretend that we work at Walter Regis, a creative agency specializing in PR, digital marketing and advertising. We're currently using this proposal planning base to plan out all the steps that we need to create a winning proposal in a response to RFPs issued by these companies. For many people, seeing all of your key details together first, before you even need to read through all of the fields in a record, can help you find what you're looking for much faster. Using a concatenate function, you can join details from multiple fields into your primary field, which acts as a descriptor for the record. By doing this, we can create unique ID names or just more detailed descriptors for your record. So in this case, we can see that we used a concatenate function and we joined together the company field and underscore and the services field. Altogether, this creates a unique RFP ID based on the company and the services that they're requesting in their RFP. There are also many different ways to use this. So for example, in the proposal steps table, we can use a concatenate function so that each team member reading through all of the records will know immediately which RFP it's referring to and what the step is. So let's create a concatenate function here. Again, we'll use the concatenate function and join together the RFP field Let's add a dash as well and the steps field. Just like that, we've created more detailed descriptors for all of these records. So we don't need to manually add in these overviews of the steps ourselves. Now moving on, I'm going to show you how you can create conditional relationships in Airtable through if statements. So for example, Say Andy just wants to take a look at his steps. He can go to his view that's been filtered for his steps and take a look at everything that he still needs to do. 
Usually, he'll need to evaluate if he hasn't completed something yet, if the deadline has passed already, so is it overdue, or is he still making good progress towards meeting that deadline. By using an if statement, you can establish a set of conditions that when met, provide you with a specified output. So in this case, Andy would no longer need to go through every one of his records to identify whether or not a certain step is overdue or in progress because the formula will do it for him. So let's set up a basic if statement first that tells us if a task is simply complete or incomplete. Let's call it status and set up as a formula. The structure of an if statement is simple. If whatever you specify is true, then it will show you value one. Otherwise, it'll show you value two. In this case, we just want to create a basic if statement that tells us if this checkbox is checked, then our status should read complete. And if it's unchecked, then our status should read incomplete. In Airtable, if a checkbox has been checked, it'll equal one. So in this case, if complete, equals one, then it should say complete. Otherwise, it should say incomplete. Let's save that and see what it looks like. Nice, so we just set up our first basic if statement. However, if we want the status field to be a little bit more complex, so we want it to tell us if it's overdue, if a due date has passed, or if it's still in progress, if the due date is impending, then we'll need to create a nested if statement, basically an if statement within an if statement. So now, instead of it just telling us that something is incomplete if the checkbox isn't checked, we want it to actually tell us if, in this case, if this due date is passed today, then it should say overdue. We can use the isBefore function to check if the day has passed already. The isBefore function checks if date A is before date B. In this case, date A is going to be the due date and date B is going to be today. So isBefore the due date and today. Basically what we're saying is if the due date has passed, then it should say overdue. Otherwise it should say in progress. Nice. So now not only have we set up an if statement, but we've also set up a nested if statement that saves every member of your team a ton of time. We can also add emojis to brighten this whole thing up. So not only are emojis fun, but practically speaking, they're a great visual way to distinguish between records and can convey meaning without language. So that means that anyone taking a look at your base can immediately derive meaning from an emoji without needing to read what the status necessarily says. So let's add some fun emojis in here. So if it's complete, let's add a green checkbox. If it's overdue, let's add this red clock. And if it's in progress, let's add this running man. Great. Emojis can also be a great way for you to color code that record as well. Overall, if statements can be used in a plethora of ways to, say, establish criteria for successful applications based on scores, to tell you whether or not your merchandise is in stock or out of stock, or to tell you if you've paid for a service and who to follow up with. The possibilities are endless. Lastly, let's talk about date and time functions. So why are date and time functions so useful? They make date-based calculations. So whether you're using Airtable for project management, building a CRM or activity tracking, or even collecting job applications, you can use date and time functions to calculate duration, to create deadlines, or to understand how many days have passed since your last activity. In our case, it would be really helpful to know how many days are left until this deadline. 
What we can do is create a new field. Let's call it days till submission. Set up as a formula. And using one of the many date time functions available in Airtable, we can calculate the difference between this deadline date and today. So let's use more specifically the datetime diff function. Basically, the datetime diff function returns the difference between date times and specified units. So, what is the difference between this deadline to respond and today? And we want it to return the unit in days. And that's it. Now we've learned how to create a simple duration. Now our whole team will know exactly how many days they have until this deadline to respond. So overall, that concludes our demo on formulas. Airtable supports a wide variety of formulas. So check out support.airtable.com if you're interested in seeing what you can do with formulas in Airtable. Thank you so much for joining, and I hope that you start playing around with more formulas in your Airtable base. Thanks.